I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. Mr. President, uh, we thank the Special Coordinator for a Middle East Peace Process, Mr. Tor Venisland, for the comprehensive briefing about the situation on the occupied Palestinian territories, including the Gaza Strip and the West Bank of the Jordan River. We also thank Madam Helen Clark for her briefing. Uh, the General Assembly yesterday adopted a genuinely historic resolution reaffirming the advisory opinion of the ICJ, which clearly highlights the unlawful nature of the Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands and the need to put this to an end. We are heartened by the fact that the majority, the overwhelming majority of the Council's membership uh, uh, supported this initiative uh, to achieve a just settlement and a long-term resolution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and to uphold the right of the Palestinians to establish their own state within the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as the capital. This result is a clear testament to the fact that the resolution to this issue is long overdue. At the same time, in discussions at the Council on the situation at the OPT for a number of months, thanks to the efforts of our Western colleagues, these discussions have been rather mundane and routine, and this despite the fact that every day dozens and hundreds of Palestinians are dying. In the nearly one year of Israeli operations in Gaza, more than 41,000 Palestinians have died. The majority are women and children, at least 100,000 people have been wounded, tens of thousands are missing persons, and yet it, Palestinians are dying not just in Gaza. The West Bank, where objectively less attention at the Council has paid attention to, is enduring an equally tragic crisis. More than 600 Palestinians have been killed, more than 5,000 wounded. During the recent Tzahal summer camps operation alone, 39 Palestinians, including eight children, were killed using drones, artillery, and missiles. They wrought havoc uh, targeting civilian infrastructure. Roads have been destroyed, water and electricity lines destroyed, and administrative buildings have also been destroyed. Before our very eyes, taking advantage of the Council's paralysis, thanks to the U.S.'s efforts, the Israeli leadership is seeking and is, is achieving the objective to expel the West Bank's Palestinian uh, population. Palestin uh, settlement activity has been ratcheted up at a record rate where there's a de facto colonization of Palestinian lands. More and more settler outposts are being established in parallel. Palestinian homes are being demolished in East Jerusalem and Area C. Law enforcement is absolutely indifferent to violence by radically minded settlers against uh, local uh, civilians, and yet none of our Western colleagues have voiced any concern about the erasure of Palestinian identity, even though now we are not even talking just about that. We are talking about the literal erasure of the Palestinian people. They're being wiped out from the face of the earth. Israel is not limiting itself to rendering Gaza uninhabitable. Western Jerusalem is deliberately adopting measures making the lives of Palestinians unbearable in the West Bank too. As uh, Israel continues to withhold Ramallah's clearance revenues, unemployment in the West Bank has reached 40 percent. The lack of proliferation of Israeli checkpoints means that the staff of agencies located in neighboring cities cannot get to work. The settlers are uh, carrying out raids targeting agricultural sites. As a result of Israeli attacks, 69 schools and five universities have been damaged, depriving children and young people of access access to education. All of this attests to the West Jerusalem's West Jerusalem's persistent policy to uh, its persistent policy to resolve the, in addressing the Palestinian issue with the use by creating irrever irreversible effects on the ground, brute force and financial pressure. Uh, Israeli authorities are afraid, fear nothing, for the boundless support from Washington allows Israel to elude responsibility for any crimes. Uh, the rapidly deteriorating situation in the West Bank re requires a reaction from the Security Council. In the same extent, uh, just as the appalling situation in Gaza. 
Gaza does. Uh, Palestinian civilians are dying there too, and they are losing their homes there too. We all perfectly are aware of the fact that what is taking place is the targeted, deliberate policy of the Israeli authorities, and this can uh, the, 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 there can be no just no justification for collective punishment of all Palestinians. However, the Council remains inactive. Unfortunately, its effective efforts on Middle East settlement have continuously been blocked by the U.S., which pushed through a resolution 2735, which is completely unviable and con the U.S. continues to block any attempts uh, to uh, uh, set out a just assessment of Israeli actions, even in the context of the inadmissibility of imperiling the lives and health of U.N. and humanitarian personnel in Gaza. Let us remember, let us recall that since October 7, the U.S. has continuous uh, has cast five vetoes to shield its ally and to block the adoption of a clear demand from the Council for a ceasefire. The one thing that the Americans expect from the Security Council is to exert pressure on Hamas not to and not to uh, get in the way of Israel on the ground, and this despite the fact that the vaunted deal actually has repeatedly been blocked by none other than Israel, for whose benefit the U.S. essentially has been violating Resolution 2735, which did set out pr parameters for this agreement, even though this was diluted colleagues, against the backdrop of the growing demand from the entire international community for a modicum of concrete measures to alleviate and improve the situation in the OPT, the members of the Council simply must summon political will and courage and adopt a decision for a ceasefire in Gaza and measures to enforce compliance therewith. Pressure needs to be exerted not so much on Hamas, but rather on our American colleagues who continue to regard both the Council and multilateral diplomacy as a whole as an unneeded burn burden. Your hard-headed policy to reject the authority of the Security Council and the UN as a whole not only failed to generate any progress in the context of resolving the current conflict, but it has also caused it to continue, this conflict to continue for nearly a year with the risk of this metastasizing into a full-blown regional conflict. There are ongoing attacks along the blue line with Lebanon. The arbitrary airstrikes on Syria are ongoing, as are the targeted uh, liquidations on both sides. In this context, we strongly condemn the unprecedented cyber attack on the friend, fraternal on the friendly country of Lebanon and its citizens, which constitutes a gross violation of its sovereignty and constitutes a grave threat to and challenge to international law. We view what transpired as yet another act of hybrid warfare against Lebanon, which caused suffering of thousands entirely innocent people. Against the backdrop of growing tensions in Lebanon and the Israeli border areas, such reckless actions are fraught with highly dangerous consequences, uh, resulting in further destabilization of the military political situation in the Middle East region. The developments at present in escalation in the south of Lebanon and Israeli airstrikes clearly show the dangerous threshold that the Israeli-Arab conflict has reached. Mr. President, Russia from the very beginning of this crisis has consistently advocated a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire, sustained and secure humanitarian access, the release of all hostages and forcibly detained persons, as well as the relaunch of the peace process on a two-state basis, the result of which would be the establishment of a Palestinian state coexisting in peace and security with Israel in accordance with the approved international legal decisions. And we stand ready to support any constructive initiative from the Council to attain these objectives. We should like to hope that the need for decisive collective measures to halt Israeli operations will become clear to our U.S. colleagues as well. For now, the cost of their hard-headedness and imperialistic ambitions are being paid for with the lives of Palestinian women and children. Thank you.